Modern Warfare 3 Season 1 Reloaded is this Wednesday, so today we're touching on the more detail-oriented side of things, like the changes to expect gameplay related wise, launch times, and perhaps preloads, as well as a slight recap on some items coming in a comprehensive and all-in-one everything you need to know video about Season 1 Reloaded. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What are you looking forward to, or perhaps not with Season 1 Reloaded in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone? Drop a like if you enjoy the video, and make sure to subscribe to stay updated with all things COD and all things FPS related. Finally, make sure to check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best black glasses on the market, but more on that a little later. For now, let's dive into Modern Warfare 3, Season 1 Reloaded, and everything you need to know about it. So first and foremost, when is Season 1 Reloaded? When is this update for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone? Well, we did mention it was Wednesday, but it starts at 9 a.m. Pacific time, so that translates to 10 a.m. Mountain, 11 Central, noon Eastern, and then elsewhere in Europe and such, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. in Berlin, 8 p.m. in Moscow, 2 a.m. in Seoul, South Korea, 4 a.m. in Sydney, and again, elsewhere, depending on where you are in comparison to those time zones. But the other question is, will there be a preload? That's the one thing that always is the big question mark with these, because as of the last year or two, they've kind of been hit or miss recently. As of late, it's only been PlayStation only. Usually that's the case. But whether or not there is for PlayStation or other platforms as well, usually that'll be something that comes along about 24 hours or 12 hours in that window before the update itself. So I would not expect to see anything until at least tomorrow here at some point during the afternoon, early evening for you, depending on where you are. Now, we've already talked about a lot of things coming with this update on a more front-facing side of things. So before we recap any of that kind of stuff, which we'll try and breeze past, I want to first talk about some gameplay changes to expect, kind of shift the focus here on what you need to know about this season, because we've already touched on a decent bit of it. But as for gameplay changes, well, you'll be able to see changes and fixes for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. So starting on the Modern Warfare 3 side of things, and the first thing is kind of a global thing across Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, is that right now it's said that there is a fix scheduled for the event tab. And with fix scheduled as the designation, it means that it should be something that is 100% in this update alongside everything else. But for those that did not have access to their event tab, this should on paper, in theory, fingers crossed, fix all that issue out for you so that you can finally see every single upcoming event and all the information that you need to complete it. Because I know that we've had challenges throughout like the Santa Slayground event that people could not see because their event tab just was not there. So they couldn't actually work towards a lot of what they were going for for those event rewards. Boards. So fingers crossed that is actually something that is fixed out, but right now it is mentioned that there is a fix incoming for that. It's also said there's a no stock attachment for the XRK stalker, a fix coming for that issue where it is not currently unlockable. The firing range dummies are said to have a fix inbound for this, not matching real player health. This was an issue that has kind of regressed a little bit. It seems like it was something that was fixed out earlier, but then now it's still back. But the issue is that the dummy health is still a base 100 HP like you'd see in Modern Warfare 2. Before that increased to 150, across the board for Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer. So you wouldn't get an accurate representation of MP's health and TTK unless you enabled one plate in the settings. And then by extension, you also wouldn't be able to experience at all the full Warzone health and TTK since you could only cap out with three plates and that would be 250 HP instead of 300 as it is in Warzone currently. So that should be something that has a fix as well. The priceless camos for the Storm Ender and a few other weapons should be something that's fixed, but we'll have to wait and see if that all happens. Camo tracking is one of those things that to me just like kind of eludes everything way more than other issues that have fixes scheduled. So we'll see if that actually does happen. The field of view vehicle issue should be resolved as well. As with HUD visual effects stacking on akimbo weapons in zombies and story missions fixed out along with acquisition stash fixes for bug losses. Now, it's not listed, but likely coming to both bridging the gap between Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone is additional weapon balancing. We saw that a minor update was given on paper that didn't do a whole ton of things like the MTZ 762 in Warzone, but it was stated by Raven that we'd have more significant ones coming with this week's update. So, presumably across the board for both Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, but we do know at least some is coming to Warzone. Now, Warzone on a technical side of things, fixes and adjustments, Ascenders should hopefully be reintroduced with fixes here as of this update. They were disabled, maybe all of them across the world, but at least some of them I know for a fact were, but they were disabled because it would allow for a handful of under the map glitches, where if you descended from the top of them, it would put you underneath the world. Obviously not something you wanna see happen. So they disabled some, maybe all of them haven't been able to jump in as of the update that took those offline. I've been out of office for that. Melee damage should have a fix here coming where that is inconsistent damage when using melee attacks. Redeployment notifications are still not consistently playing. It's stated as investigating, so we're not guaranteed to have a fix here for this, but fingers crossed, 
I really hope we do have one coming here with this. Dead Silence is very possible to be re-enabled, again, not confirmed, but that was removed over a month ago at this point since December 11th. So Dead Silence may very well be returning in that loot pool. The Persistent Airstrike notification, while it is something that is being investigated, it still says, I'm really hoping for an adjustment here at this. And the biggest thing to me, I think, is just give us a radius marker. I think that would be the easiest thing to allow players to know if they are in that radius or if they're not, or if they don't see that ribbon pop up in that notification on screen, at least you'll have on that tack map, like you would the mortar strike, the location where you're in the danger zone. I personally think that would be the easiest fix, but maybe that's just me. We also saw some smaller items of squad HUD showing incorrect numbers of players, armor plate bugs where you're ending up in this perpetual loop of plating while downed. There should be fixes to corrected items in the resupplies like lethals and tacticals, gulag tokens not turning to plunder or rather cash for unspent tokens should have a fix coming, fixes for armor plates not being equipped after the gulag should be coming, and additional smaller fixes for private matches and calling cards in the after action report should all have fixes as well. So those are the technical things here that you should know about within Season 1 Reloaded from Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. But again, let's talk about the content. I don't want to stick too long on this kind of stuff because we have already covered most of this. But to house everything all in one as a true everything you need to know, it should be at least mentioned again for those that may not have seen prior videos. On the Modern Warfare 3 side of things, I think the biggest thing in terms of replayable content is naturally going to be that ranked play experience for Modern Warfare 3. 4v4 competitive play under the CDL rule sets and the modes of search, hardpoint, and control, you have to be level 55 or higher to play this. This hopefully will mitigate some of the amount of cheaters that will have access to the mode and retaining some competitive integrity, but who knows if that'll actually hold up or be enough to roadblock those that are trying to actively cheat within ranked play. But you'll have a career rank with Season 1 Reloaded where everyone is starting at 1. You'll have seasonal skill divisions of Bronze to Iridescent and Top 250, with SR gains and losses dictated by your wins and losses, but individual performance dictating how much is won or lost. Then, seasonal rewards, you'll have the ability to, as the season goes on, play and continue to earn things, but you have the ability to win 5 ranked matches for a Season 1 competitive weapon sticker. 10 wins is the Pro Issue Gutter Knife Weapon Blueprint. 20 wins is the Script Writer Weapon Charm. 30 wins is the Built Different Large Decal. 40 wins is the Ranked Play Season 1 Loading Screen. And 50 wins is the Season 1 Ranked Veteran Weapon Camo. Then, for the multiplayer content, we end up having the new event of the Boys Soup Siege, the second crossover for the Boys event here with this. We'll be seeing some stuff like new LTMs, some shop bundles and stuff that go along with that, but in terms of the event itself, it's going to be a challenge-based event. So, it's nice we're going to see that event tab fixed because players are going to need to see what is available to earn and what you have to do to earn those. So, if you get one Operator Heat Vision Elimination for the Boys mode, you'll end up getting a new calling card. Deactivating 20 pieces of equipment using DDoS will give you an emblem. Getting four Four operator eliminations using the MTZ 762 will give you a battle pass tier skip. Getting two operator eliminations in a single life with the overkill vest equipped five times will give you a large decal. Getting 15 operator akimbo eliminations will give you a weapon charm. And getting seven operator eliminations using lethal equipment will give you a double XP token. If you complete all six of those challenges, you end up getting an unspecified LMG blueprint called the Boys Special. So a completion reward there for everything as well. You, of course, have that new map of Rio. Talked about this before. Really enjoyed the game time that I. I had on that. It's a nice little three lane map with long lines of sight on the edge, but a lot of close quarters combat in the center and sort of lanes leading to the center. The new modes of team gunfight, headquarters, and infected will all be coming along with that. And the HRM 9 and the Tack of Alvary will be coming as new weapons, one as an armory unlock, and one as a weekly challenge completion reward. So you'll have access to all that kind of stuff. On the zombie side of things, you'll have a new warlord introduced, but really not a whole ton beyond that. Kind of lacking in terms of content for zombies with this update. Fingers crossed season two introduces a decent bit of stuff that keeps players interested and busy on the war zone side of things though it's significantly less content now coming with season one reloaded because of the removal of the covert exfil and by extension the weapons case as well it was described recently in an announcement by raven that over the last few days they had seen the feedback about the covert exfil feature and have decided not to launch it in the standard battle royale modes with season one reloaded they believe that the covert exfil in the gameplay loop it provides paired with the weapons case would make for exciting additions to Warzone, but they'll be instead launching both of these features in an upcoming dedicated mode. They're looking forward to the new challenges that these features will provide and to the continued feedback once the mode is available. So that's two things right off the bat here that we can kind of scratch off as to what's upcoming for Season 1 Reloaded in the Warzone experience. So that leaves us with really just two more advertised things here, the Champion's Quest and then the NVG public event in the Gulag. The Champion's Quest, as a recap here, new win conditions, you have to either win five matches in a row, which was 
previously the conditions you had to do in Modern Warfare 2's Warzone, but you also now have the ability to have this active if you win 30 matches overall on the season. And seemingly, you can go for that at any point here beyond that. So firstly, really interesting because that might open the opportunity for a lot of people that are their grinders to have ample amount of opportunities to do this. But also, I'm curious if this is retroactive in which every win up until this point counts towards that 30 now, so that maybe with Season 1 Reloaded, you could potentially jump right in and jump in to get the nuke contract started on Game 1. That's not been specified, but it's certainly interesting. You'll also be able to steal it once if a team is on it in your game and you wipe them. You can steal the contract one time. It doesn't happen more than once, so if you kill a team that stole it from the squad that was on the contract, you won't get it as a result. You also will see, if you do complete it, the new nuke skin that was revealed, but also a few items have leaked, like a calling card, emblem, weapon decal, weapon charm, and a few other smaller things. No camo has been found just yet, but that does not mean that it's not going to be a thing. Still possible that it is, but we'll see. And finally, the NVG Gulag public event. That is just where you're going to have NVGs. It's nighttime, so everything else is still the same, though. As we recently saw, the Sidewinder was also replaced in the Gulag by the Ram 7, so that'll be a nice adjustment here to it that you hopefully won't have any bad sort of loadouts in that during that event. But anyways, that is Season 1 Reloaded and everything you need to know as a result leading to Wednesday. So that's what we're going to call it. Before we do, though, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for what I firmly believe are the best blue light glasses on the market. I've worked with these guys for nearly three years now, and I cannot recommend them enough. They're the most lightweight, comfortable, and durable frames on the market as far as I've used, and definitely I think they've helped my daily productivity. Full transparency, yes, they are a bit of an investment, but I think your vision is absolutely worth investing into, especially if you're like me, looking at a monitor, phone, or gaming for a good chunk of the day. If you guys would like to learn more, at the very least, I'd recommend at least checking their website out to see what they can do to better break down the science and all the specifics way better than I ever could. But what I can personally say is that I'd highly recommend them. So if you want to learn more, check the link in the description below. And if you guys would like to pick something up for yourself, use code ESPRESSO to get 10% off your entire order. But that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down below. What are you looking forward to or perhaps not about Season 1 Reloaded? Make sure you drop a like on the video if you guys enjoyed and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 3 and other FPS related content. Love to have in the community, but for now, thanks so much for watching. Honest Man Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.